How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to tell you everything that I know about the LG 2023 OLED TV lineup. I got the pleasure of seeing the LG C3, the 8K LG Z3, the wireless M3, and also the star of the show, the next generation of LG OLED, the LG G3, which uses a new panel technology. And I'm going to tell you all about that and much more in this video. To see the G3 at CES 2023 was a bit of a surprise because we had heard that MLA technology was taking a back seat in 2023, but that wasn't the case because they're clearly bringing it to the LG G3. Now they say that the LG G3 is 70% brighter than the previous year's LG B2. Now you have to remember this is the B2 model, but the difference between the B2 and the C2 in brightness wasn't a huge margin. So like seeing that 70% brighter than B2, that's actually a good percentage brighter. But the question remained, did it look that way in person? Could you tell it was 70% brighter? Well, I don't know about 70% brighter, but you could definitely tell it was brighter than the LG C3. So yeah. I got the impression that it was brighter and the demos that they had really did demonstrate brightness. Now I believe the TV was in vivid mode for these demos, but still it was very bright and I really did like the picture. One thing you have to know about the LG G3 is that only the 55 inch, 65 inch and 77 inch screen size is going to be 70% brighter, which means that the 83 inch screen size is not 70% brighter. So you want to keep that in mind. Another thing you should know about the LG G3 if you're not familiar with the G series is that it comes with a wall mount instead of a stand. So if you're thinking about using a TV stand for this, you're going to have to buy one separately if you're not going to wall mount your TV. Another thing about the G series that you might not know is that it comes with a five year warranty from LG when you buy the TV. For those two reasons, if you're somebody who buys a mount when you buy your TV as well as a warranty, this could be a real good value for you. So what do I think of the LG G3 and how does it look in person? Well, when I saw the LG G3, it was clear that yes, it is brighter than the C3 by a significant margin. Seeing self-lit pixels at this brightness level really gave me a feeling of looking at a QD OLED almost. And really that's the feeling that I was hoping to get with the G3 and it definitely will deliver that. Now the content that I saw was quite limited so I didn't see a ton of different footage from the LG G3, just a little bit of demos here and there. But you could tell that when they showed color, it was able to get to a higher brightness level than you were able to see before with colors specifically to the LG OLED. So there is definitely something that the LG OLED is doing to boost color brightness. That much is clear to me. What's not clear to me is how it's going to stack up when it is next to a QD OLED. But we'll have to find that out when we get our hands on both of them later on this year. So the G3 is nice and LG quote says it blows the G2 out of the water with brightness. So it's clear the G2 to the G3 is a big step up in technology. But what about the C2 to the C3? Well, that's where things change a little bit because the difference between the C2 and the C3 this year, the truth is we're not seeing a huge jump. Overall, what you're seeing with the G2 and the G3 is a technology shift. What you're seeing from the C2 to the C3 is more of a processing upgrade. And that is the new Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor, which is going to give the C3 a little bit of a higher perceived peak brightness level. Now, overall, it's going to basically almost be the same TV as a C2, but those processing differences will be able to push it a little bit further. They have made some changes to the way that their algorithms work in their processor and the AI processor itself has gotten smarter for the 2023 TV season. So besides the improved average picture level from the C2, what are we looking at for the C2 to the C3 with the processor? Well, there has been some changes to the way that AI Picture Pro works, where the Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro is going to go from 5,000 blocks all the way up to 20,000 blocks. And so that will make the Dynamic Tone Mapping a little bit better in 2023. There's also been a ton of different menu changes and upgrades and new modes to select from, like the new AI Personal Picture Wizard, where it's going to help you figure out your personal preference by going through an AI picture setup, which is something I thought was pretty unique and I've never personally seen this in a TV. I did put up a short about this, so go check that out after this video. I also put up a short about the new impressive quick menu that they added where you can customize this quick menu option screen to help you get 
in and out of your favorite picture settings a little bit easier. Now this was another cool intuitive upgrade that I thought was really awesome and something I think is kind of underrated when we're talking about showing off TV upgrades because this just makes the user experience feel a lot better overall. But is that enough upgrades for the C3 for you? I just wanna know that in the comments. While technically I feel that it is a upgrade over the C2, I don't know that it's going to warrant that purchase over a C2 just right away. Later on in the holiday season when it's priced similar to a C2, then I can definitely see the reason to go that way. For most people though, I think if you're upgrading your LG OLED at all this year, you're going to want to look at the G3 because that is where you are seeing the significant differences. And I said I saw the difference from the G3 and the C3. I definitely did. If you get the chance to check out a G3 next to a C3 yourself, you should definitely do it because that will maybe help you decide if that brightness difference is going to be what you really want. Because at the end of the day, not everybody wants the brightest TV. Some of them are okay with just a little bit of brightness in a dark room. So if you're somebody that doesn't want to be overwhelmed with brightness, the C3 and the C2, that's a really good way to look if you're looking at an LG OLED. So I also got the pleasure of seeing the LG M3. The LG M3 uses what they call a zero connect box, which is a nice play on the one connect box from Samsung, one upping them a little bit. And what's great about the zero connect box is that it uses no wires at all to connect to the TV itself. So that's cool, a wireless TV. I think that could be very useful for people who mount their TV and they just don't wanna deal with any wire mess at all. But the question everybody had was like, how is this going to work with gaming? They said it can transmit 4K 120 hertz for gaming, and the input lag is going to be, quote, imperceivable. What that means in terms of latency numbers, I'm not entirely sure. And I'm not really convinced until I actually see somebody test it out and run some input latency tests on it. Overall, it is a really cool concept, and I hope that the LG M3 works, and this is something we can see going forward in our TVs. And overall, that's what the M3 was to me. It was a glimpse into the future. It was cool to see. And it was like something I've never seen before. Speaking of something I've never seen before, an LG Z series TV up close and personal. This is their 8K model and I was able to see the Z3 in person and I gotta say, I was pretty blown away by what they're able to do with 8K. I've always wondered to myself, why the heck are these TVs so expensive? And I found out the reason why, it's just they look really good in person and in terms of details, you could definitely tell there was more details on the Z series TV than the G series TV. Is this because of 8K? I'm not really sure, but it did feel like some of the fine details were a lot clearer in the 8K TV. So I do think that has to do with the upscaling overall and maybe just the 8K content that they had on display. And I also felt like this with the Samsung TVs that I seen that were 8K. So I don't know, this is my first time seeing 8K in person. So maybe it's a placebo thing. Maybe it's my mind telling me that it's better than it is, but it definitely looked really good and the fine details stuck out in 8K. So yeah, maybe 8K isn't as bad as everybody's saying it is. But after seeing all four of those LG OLED TVs, it was clear to me that the G3 was the winner. The brightness just stuck out over all of the other TVs that were in that room. And I think that the G3 is going to be quite a contender in 2023. And I can't, I really can't wait to see it next to a QD OLED second generation TV. That is going to be the battle of the best OLED for 2023. And I can't wait to put those two side by side. It's going to be so amazing. So stay tuned to the channel if you want to watch that happen later on this year. Make sure you subscribe and check out the other videos that I've done in the past, like the LG G2 versus the QD OLED TV right here.